Ryan Chambers joins the show to discuss some team awards, his player grades from this past season, and we'll take a look at the offseason ahead for the Dallas Stars. That's next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All righty, Th- this will be my, my hard-hitting question uh, of the day. And we'll come back to, to Matt Duchesne and, and Chris Tanev. I- I've made the prediction last week, I think they're going to re-sign both. But we have heard from the Dallas Morning News, uh, of course, the wonderful Leah, that Jim Nill, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, does not like the numbers. And he thinks it's going to be really hard to bring the band back together. I think they can get it done. And, and and I was, I, I made peace with moving on for Matt Duchesne at the end of the season, just after a really, really tough Stanley cup playoff for him. I just think Dallas is going to get enough for Maverick Bork, guys like Logan Stankoven, who are going to be elevated in the lineup. You're, you're going to, you're going to make up for maybe what you lose there. But I also have sort of come to the realization that there isn't a, a great fit on the market, in my opinion. And we already know Matt Duchesne works. And he still may take less. Nashville's still paying him. Uh, he, he wants to play somewhere where he can win and can compete. And I think that has some some leverage for, for the Stars. I think there there is something there where maybe he takes less again. Who knows? Tanev's a different story. Is there going to be a lot of suitors? And, and I've also I've also come to the, the realization, or at least accepted, he could not return. And I think that's going to be really hard for Stars fans to to accept. There is a strong possibility he he does not return because he's a right handed defenseman, and teams like Toronto I think could pay him handsomely, or at least more than maybe what the market is if they want, because he is a really really good player. So take it away. The floor is yours. Where do you sit on Matt Duchesne and Chris Tanev um, in general, a free agency right around the corner? Okay, you ready for this? This is going to be a, a little bit of a, a monologue here, okay? Yes. Sorry. Oh, perfect. Right. Let's sit back. <laughs> okay, so the, I'll start with this first. And what I talked about a lot uh, yesterday, we, we recorded an episode last night, me and my brother did, and I went on a monologue on that a little bit too. The, there is... The stars, the way they were built, they were built ready to win this year. However, I still feel like that there is something that they were missing and something that could be upgraded on and something that certain players have that was not utilized, especially in that series against Edmonton. And I I know some people are going to roll their eyes when I say Mm -hmm. this, but it's the physicality aspect, the grit aspect, the I'm going to punch you in the face, the, the, the mean... Boston mm-hmm. Bruin, Florida Panther, nastiness side of the game that we didn't have. When you look at the series, the players that we have, we have players that can do that. But we didn't see it really much from Jamie Ben, and that I kind of understand because I, I think he was trying to tame it down because it, he let his emotions get the better of him last year in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't see it at all from Mason Marchment very much until it was honestly too late. That's another guy that, as much as I kind of propped him up as being you know one of the most improved players that's something that left to be desired for me at least because i mean edmonton was pushing us back hard and we didn't have any nastiness there from us and then what also didn't help is the fact that yanni hockenpah did not play in the playoffs at all I, i think that was a huge missed aspect from from that point i know he has some defensive miscue sometimes but you throw him on the third pairing with ryan Suter. And that would work out perfectly. He's a guy that you need to kind of have that aspect in the game and push that in there. Now, that being said, this kind of transitions to the Duchesne Tanev uh, mm-hmm. argument here. The, I really feel like you cannot lose Chris Tanev at this point because, the, yeah. I mean, you, you the, who are you going to replace him with? That, that's that's my thing. And, and the fact that he's right-handed, he's 34, which that can be a good thing and a bad thing at both ends of the ice. I mean, he's getting up there in age. But we saw 
as did the rest of the NHL, what he did with the stars in the playoffs. He he played against the best players in the world and for the most part shut them down. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talk about Mark Stone and Jonathan Marcheseau who won the cup last year. It took seven games, but he did it. We look at Colorado with Nathan McKinnon and Miko Ranson, and he did it there too. And and then even in the Edmonton series at points before we started running out of gas, he was he was the reason why the stars were able to shut down Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl for a point in time mm-hmm. until the the dams burst and and we lost the series. So I, I know that some people are like, well, you can't overpay for him. You can't overpay for him. This is one of the few times that I, I would ask Jim Nell to forego. And, and I'm telling the, the GM of the NHL, this is <laughs> please just give the guy what he wants. If, yeah. if, 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 if it means an extra year, like if, if you give him three years instead of two or four years instead of three, I, I think that's worth it because Th- this is this is the window for the stars. I really feel like this is opening mm-hmm. it up. That the, the last two years have been the window, and you've only got so long until some of these guys, the older guys, and we've already we're already seeing guys leave. Joe Pavelski, we don't know. It, he, he's basically said he's retired, but we he's he's gone. He, we don't know the the future with him. So if we want to see guys like this succeed. If you want to see Jamie Ben get a cup, if you want to see uh, Ryan Suter get a cup, some of these older guys, you, you got to show out the money now and you got to figure out the cap later because the cap is, it, it should be a non-factor at this point. And if it means 6 million for Chris Tanev, I know that's insane. I know that sounds crazy. Yeah. But I feel like you have to do it. And, and uh, then on, on the other side, my, my prediction is, they re-sign Chris Tanev and Duchesne goes to market. And yeah. now, so now my thing is, okay, well now you have 132 points. You have to, you know, replace with Pavelski being retired mm-hmm. and then Matt Duchesne leaving. And uh, a lot of people are not going to like this either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. But it makes too much sense for me. And the guy that could possibly make that fit for the Dallas stars. And that's Patrick Kane. He's 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 an older guy, so he's not mm-hmm. going to take as much uh, much cap. He's not. I mean, I think the the Red Wings got him for two and a half or three, which is exactly mm-hmm. kind of where you need. This is a guy who has Stanley Cup pedigree. That's the biggest thing about him that yeah. Joe Pavelski and Matt Duchesne do not have. He has won cups and he has that ability to get over. He has proven that despite the injury. He's still a point per game guy, and he was one of the key guys for the Detroit Red Wings heading down the stretch to the point where they almost made the playoffs, like in the overtime of their last game in the regular season. Um, and he's he's got some connections with the Stars. We, we have been hearing about this for years now, yeah, like year and a half or two. That like, oh well, the Dallas Stars are looking to to get Patrick Kane, and at the time it didn't make any sense because we had a Joe Pavelski. I, I think that was the key. We had a Joe Pavelski who could fulfill that role as the veteran guy on the team who's kind of been there, done that, done all of that stuff. Now, the obviously the, the biggest knock about this, and, and it, it's fair for anybody who says that, is one of the things that Jim Nell is very big on is character. And it was one of the things that Paul Maurice talked about with his Florida Panthers team is the high character of, the t- that team is one of the reasons why they won the Stanley Cup. I think with that you can deal with a a single player like this. His character has come into question a couple of times. That is absolutely fair to point out. But if you look at what he has, what he has done, the acumen that he's able to bring to the stars that and I, I know that seems crazy too is that that Stanley Cup pedigree thing mm-hmm. People don't like talking about it, but it's a thing. It, it is absolutely a thing. And the only guy we really have on the stars that has been there, done that, is Tyler Sagan. And he did that when he was 19, his rookie season. In the yeah, NHL. his rookie. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we need more of that kind of stuff in the stars locker room. That's also why like this, like this, it sounds like he's going after William Carrier. We, we've, we've seen mm-hmm. the room, Elliot Freeman on 32 Thoughts, the podcast, that that could be a thing that – could be an advantage to the Dallas Stars. William Carrier has won the Stanley Cup with Vegas. He 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 fits exactly the bill, other than the scoring aspect 
of what you need in, on this team. He's got that pedigree. He's the nasty guy. He can hit when he needs to. He can put punch people in the face when he when he needs um, to. So that that's going to be a very unpopular opinion for me, uh, mm-hmm. from me, for a lot of people, and that Patrick Kane could be that perfect fit. It makes so much sense to me right now that you okay. go after Patrick Kane, and he's not even going to ask for you know four or five years. I mean, it, you, you could probably get him for two or three. And that would work just fine. Mm-hmm. And that oh, that's that two to three year window is exactly what you need for to take this this team to the next level and to replace those 132 points that you're losing with mm-hmm. Duchesne and with Pavelski. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust skits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride or your money back. Because you're burning rubber, not cash with eBay Motors. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Yeah, all right. Uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of monologue yeah. in there. Right. No, the, no, no worries. There's a lot to unpack there. I, I I appreciate that was that was great. I I would I would push back on Patrick Kane. Don't, my my main reason is I just don't think he's the piece to get you over the hump. I I don't think a 35 year old Patrick Kane, he's going to be 36 next season, is what is going to get you over the hump to to win a Stanley Cup. I don't think he's necessarily a great piece either. Do I think it would work here in Dallas? Yes. I, I think he would fit because I think he fits in most places where you can throw him in a, in a secondary scoring role. He can play on the power play. He's going to be fine. He's going to be productive. But I, I, I think Patrick Kane, if he's coming to Dallas, is looking to play a very impactful role. I, I don't know if you can I, – I don't know if you can get – get to get through to him in some way where, Hey, you're going to have to take a lot, like a step back. This, this isn't Detroit where you're going to have to kind of lead and you're going to have to be this team. It's going to have to be more of a Duchesne role. Like you're going to have to play like third line minutes and and be okay with that. I don't know if he's at that point yet in in his career. And maybe he is maybe um, I'm, I'm being a bit, uh, a bit, a bit too harsh, uh, on him um and i've always think i i the rumors you, you speak of the talk around him i to me it's patrick kane wants to be in dallas more than dallas wants him to be with the stars it, it always felt that way to me where kane kane thinks this is a great idea and this would be a great fit well, a lot of players would think going to dallas would be a great fit you can compete you get to play uh in a very talented uh talented lineup and you can just kind of uh you know he, he could definitely find a way to to be productive here in Dallas but I just I don't think he, he would be the the right push but uh, but I see where you're coming from especially if you're losing Duchesne and that's where I would argue I I would rather have Matt Duchesne than Patrick Kane Duchesne thrives in a role like he did in Dallas where he does not have to be the guy you saw it in Nashville for years for Columbus Ottawa where he was paid to be the guy And he never was quite the guy like that guy you needed him to be. And you could argue here in Dallas in the postseason, he was not the the player that Dallas needed Uh, because I, you know, I I don't care if Duchesne scores 40 goals in the regular season. I need eight in in the playoffs. Like Mm -hmm. you have to give me eight because that's what you're here for. And that's, Technically, what we're paying you for is for the, for the postseason. So I, I would push back there a bit on Kane, but but I see your point. And if you're losing him, and as I mentioned, I think he would work. I I, I think most players would work here um, in, in Dallas with with, with the system. Um, Tanev is is obviously going to be a, a really, really, I think, a really, really tough dilemma 
for, for the stars for multiple it's reasons. So interesting. So yeah. interesting what he could get and where, like, how, I mean, he could get up to four years, maybe yeah. six million as a 34 yeah. year old because like, of how he played. It was yeah. Just, I, I, I don't think I can co-sign six, but I six million. But I understand as as well. Like he just was such a perfect fit. And, and how can you replace that if if he does depart? So he'll be he'll be really really interesting. And obviously, this this is an, an easy question. If it's if it's up to Tan ever Duchesne, I'm picking Tan of a hundred out of a hundred. That's what the the stars need. I will say there there are bet. I think there are better players on the market for for defensemen than there are like center icemen that I think plug in like DeMello's an interesting player that is sort of Chris Tanev like and he's still he, he's still kind of young he, he's big he, he got, well, he's not he got re-signed Tanev. he got re-signed in, in Winnipeg just oh did day. he really I, I must he have missed did. that I've been traveling or whatever I, I didn't even see that I no, um, it's okay he got four yeah. years at 4.9 I think did he really okay perfect that, see that's where I would have saw him that's, in Dallas yeah. I think that would have been a perfect replacement if he missed out um that, that's unfortunate thank you for shouting I guess traveling I I, I missed it on the plane or something <laughs> no, um, okay. but yeah no he's he's a good player and, and, and he, he kind of fits that that Chris uh Chris Tanev mold so it, it'll be interesting like what is Dallas going to do like I mean, you're looking at a possibility if Tanev's gone. You're rolling into next season with Suter, Harley, Lindell, and Miro. And, and then maybe and, you re-sign Hockenbaugh. Like, you can throw that. And, and then Bixel's an option, but we have to take that with a grain of salt. He's going to be 20 years old. Do you really think he's going to be ready to play at an everyday I, NHL level? I, I, I don't know. He, he could, but it's going to take – there's going to be growing pains is what I'm saying. And, and Dallas, unfortunately, doesn't have a – a time for that in, in some ways, like they're trying now to, we now, don't, as you mentioned. Yeah. And, and it's like Wyatt Johnston and Logan Stankoven are ready now. Like we, we, we know they're ready. They're, they're ripe, ready to go. And if Bishop can come in and do that, and, and I mean, in it, like perfect scenario is even if we are not able to get Chris Tan, if Hawk and Paul comes back, he's able to play on in the top four role and you get Suter playing with Bischel. That would be great, I think, for mm-hmm. everybody involved. And I think that would be good enough to get you through the regular season and in a playoff spot. But when you're talking about where this team's aspirations are, it it I mean, they opened they opened with numerous sports book across the board as the favorites of for the Stanley Cup next year already. And mm-hmm. uh, it, it's just it, it, it is is it enough? Are, are you willing to let Chris Tanev go to po- to save some money in order to bring some other guys back that you need as well? Or is Chris Tanev really that missing piece that I think he is? And that's just where that's just where I'm what I think and where I'm at. Yeah. And and that's why I'm predicting that Chris Tanev stays and Duchesne goes because some of that money that you would give to Duchesne. Du- yeah. du- you're going to have to give to Chris Tanev. And that's just why I think that now on your point really quick, mm. do I want, would I rather have Matt Duchesne or would I rather have Patrick Kane? Absolutely. 100% in a million years. I'd rather have Matt Duchesne because he's shown yeah. the character that he has. He fits well with the Dallas stars. Uh, the, the only question that I have is did even at his age, which I think he's 33. Um, I mean, uh, I, I, yeah, he's going to be 34. 34. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. he's, he's still able to play and he, he still played very well, but oh, yeah. is, is he going to have, is he going to be able to learn from these playoffs and apply it to next season and be able to be that dynamic forward that we might need him to be if Rope Hens is not able to score or, mm-hmm. or Jason Robertson or Wyatt Johnston. Is he going to be that guy like Jamie Ben was for us this past year and step up when he really when we really need it. And that and and there's no guarantee that Patrick Kane would be able to do that. But the the thing between Patrick Kane and between uh, Matt Duchesne is Patrick Kane has got that Stanley Cup experience and I think that's something that this team really really needs right now and they need more guys like this and uh, sorry random tangent here yeah. another guy that that would be perfect for the stars in a bottom six role and i w- i can't believe i'm saying this again like what yeah. about patrick maroon like uh, yeah like, that th- i think that's what he's been we're impactful missing. wherever he goes he, he really has yeah and and 
we need those guys. We need those guys who can be Stanley Cup caliber guys at the end of the day who have that nastiness and grit and, and grittiness to it. We mm-hmm. have the skill. We have the offense. That's what we have. Plug Tanev in. That's what we're missing. We've got the goaltending with Wedgwood and with Ottinger. Plug that one missing piece of some nastiness, some Stanley Cup pedigree, something. And I think this team is even that much better next year. And that's why I'm getting excited for it. Yeah. No, I, I, I love this. I, I love your I love your passion for Tanev. And I, I think there's a lot of Stars fans out there that will co sign. You do whatever you can to, to keep him here in Dallas. And um, yeah, it, it really is an interesting discussion. And it's going to be an interesting dilemma. I, I They got to f- find a way to do it before July 1st. <laughs> they, they need to see if they can ink a deal because it, it's going to be tough if he goes to market because there's going to be plenty, plenty um, uh, of, of suitors. I, I, I want to segue in, into Neil Slunquist a bit because I feel like I've tried to talk myself into him being that player for, for the Dallas Stars, and it just hasn't quite worked. And Pete doesn't seem to trust him enough to play him at a level that can help him and the Dallas Stars. So are, are, are you out on Neil Lundquist being a productive player for Dallas, or do you, do you think there still is some time for, for him to, to figure it out? If there's anything that Jim Nill is, is that he's patient. He, he is absolutely patient. Mm-hmm. We saw that with Dennis Garyanov. It was a prospect turned project, and it wasn't until he was 26 until Jim Nell finally made the decision to cut ties with him. And, you know, Lundquist is nowhere near that yet. Uh, I think the thing that really impressed me about Nils Lundqvist was when he came into camp, he was one of the most fit guys. And it was obvious from Mm -hmm. that point that he took it serious. And so it's not the muscles. It's not anything physically that he can't do. It is literally all up in his head. So if you can unlock that key to that door and open that possibility for him, that would be huge. Absolutely huge for him. So I'm not willing to give up on him yet. And also the thing about Jim Nell is he's probably frustrated at this point with right-handed defensemen trying to find someone to to play with (laughs) Mayra Haskinen, right? So we can go all the way back to the Patrick Sharp trade where Steven Johns was that second half of that trade. And, you know, he was a right-handed defenseman, very bruising guy, similar to Essa Lindell, maybe a little less bruising than Yanni Hockenpah, but... Mm -hmm. Seriously, he was that guy. He was supposed to be the the Philip Heronic to Quinn Hughes. Uh, and then it was like, okay, well, Stephen Johns didn't really quite work out all that well. Okay, let's try Hawk and Paul and see if that works. And that was just a, a hopeful thing. That that didn't quite work out either. And then he and then he got so desperate to the point to find somebody to, on that right side to play with him that he spins a first round pick, which you know most people might not understand this in the hockey world, but stars fans understand this, especially the hardcore ones. Jim Nell doesn't mm-hmm. just go out and give up first round picks. Like he'll, he'll, he'll give up seconds and thirds and you know, any day of the week, but even this year we still have our first round pick. And yeah. it, so he obviously sees something in Nils that Nils doesn't quite see in himself yet. And if he can just get that freaking confidence, man, then we wouldn't be mm-hmm. talking about, you know, having to re-sign Tanev or being worried about that. Like if, if he was that top four defenseman that we know he can be and has that potential to be, then we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, being freaked out whether Chris Tanev is going to leave or not or worrying about giving him too much money or too much term or whatever in order to get him re-signed. So is there time? Yes. Am I willing to shoot him off into the moon? No, he's still got mm-hmm. some time. Let's give him a couple more years it's it's just it's bad timing because of where the stars are at right now in their Stanley Cup window, as some people have said. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day 
all summer long. I'll tell you what, I love golf, and the major championships are very exciting. The U.S. Open a couple of weeks ago. We have the British Open at Royal Troon next month. I'm going to sprinkle some money on my favorite golfers next month. Plus, you can sprinkle some money on Major League Baseball every single day. You have games every single night. Make some money this summer. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Yeah, and he's still he's still really green in terms of an NHL defenseman. He's only played 119 games in his career, mm-hmm. and, and that's just with Dallas. I think he he played a couple of dozen with with New York. So there still is a lot of room to grow, and there there was an improvement from the previous year to this season. And if you get that jump, then there, there's something to to work with there, and hopefully you can mold him uh, into a, a bit of a a player that that can be productive for you on an everyday basis. I have a couple more questions. I want to get your thoughts on just the title Andrew trade in general, since that was some, some recent news. Um, I know some, some fans are, were upset for, for a variety of reasons, but uh, for, for my listeners, it felt like most kind of under understood and really they were more worried about the locker room uh, and how that would, uh, how that trade would impact the locker room more than anything. But I think it's, I think it's great for both sides. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy for, for Ty. I think he deserves to to go to a place where he can play every day and, and he'll get some minutes uh, in San Jose. So what did you make of the move? Really what I made of this move is what was not said compared to what was said. So really what this trade was about is doing right by the player. And Jim Nell is, it, that's why he's such a high character guy, why he's won GM of the year tw- twice now, two times in a row. Mm-hmm. And why he has such uh, such a good reputation is because of what he what he does stuff like this. He he did that for Jacob Peterson a couple of years ago when Jacob Peterson, uh, man, I really wish he had worked out. Uh, yeah. When he did the same thing to San Jose. So mm. this is a guy that uh, tied to Landria. It, it really sucks because he he was becoming a fan favorite. I felt like he was that mm-hmm. bottom six guy that can every once in a while throw in a goal yeah. or so. And you know you you remember uh, not this past year but the year before he had two big goals in the playoffs. He had that two goal game which he never does. Uh, mm-hmm. And it I, I I think that that's just what he was doing right by the player. And what this also tells me is that there are more moves to be coming because the only signings that Jim Nell has done, he brought back uh, Oscar back. He brought back Mate Blue Mel uh, Peterson as well. So it just, just some depth guys down in the AHL. If, if the injuries get to that point, which hopefully they don't, but mm-hmm. I, I think there, he, he looked at the roster, saw that, he, and it's not that Ty Delandria was bad. He had a good year. Yes. I honestly yeah. like if I was giving him a grade, I'd give probably give him like a B plus or an A minus, mm-hmm. but based off of how he played. It's just that he there were other guys like Sam Steele, like Craig Smith that kind of played him out of the lineup a little bit. I mean, especially Sam Steele. And and you just you, you can't have a guy like that who's playing super well. And, you know, him be the 14th or 15th forward on your team. It, it, you yeah. just can't have that. Yeah, I think four or five years ago, it would make a lot of sense for him to stay. Unfortunately, with the context of the Dallas Stars at this point in time with players like Wyatt Johnston and Stan Coven and Maverick Bork, who are all younger than him. It's just, it was kind of an unfortunate circumstance. I'm sure Ty wanted him wanted to stay, and I'm sure Jim wanted him to stay. But as you mentioned, I think he just did right by the player, um, and, uh, and and Ty will get a chance to to play some more minutes uh, in San Jose. So my final question for you, because we've gone for like an hour now, and this is this has been fantastic. So uh, if you could play, if you could pay someone all the monies in the world, salary cap is, is not a thing, Ryan. If you could just pay any one player in the world. You just give him all the money to come play for Dallas. Who would it be right now? Oh my gosh, that is such a loaded question. <laughs> oh man. Um, and, and let's 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 not do the Connor McDavid or, or McCarr. We, we get that they're they're generational <laughs> players. It's got to be someone else. Okay, my, my, you know I I have a few. I mean, some people like Stamkos. Maybe that may be their guy at this point. But is there someone out there that you just you have? It's like your golden child that you you need to bring to Dallas. 
like uh, one of the guys, and it's funny that you said Makar because can you imagine Makar and <laughs> yes. uh, Makar and and uh, Miro together? Oh my yeah. gosh, that would be amazing. Uh, you know, it, you know, I'll I'll go off the board a little bit, and I'll go with unrestricted free agents because I, I think it's okay. it's important. Uh, even above Patrick Kane, even above uh, you know Matt Duchesne. If we could get Steven Stamkos here for a, a a certain amount of money, and I know you're saying not that, but like that that yeah, it it, it it's possible. It, it's extremely unlikely, but like that guy right there, that fits all of the bills from Patrick Kane and Matt Duchesne. You got a goal scorer. You got a guy who's won it all. He's got high character. He mm. has done everything. He can play center. He can play wing. Uh, he's not afraid of the puck. He's got some nastiness to his game a little bit. And on top of that, he's got all of that skill. So if, if there's one player that like, I wish I could have on the stars, it would be Steven Stamkos, man. That would be so cool. Yeah. He, he'd be fun to watch and it would pretty much be Pavelski 2.0, like playing an entire career somewhere, uh, somewhere, and then just, you know, hopping on board with, with Dallas to, to, to find it out. And funny enough, the, the two final teams were Pavelski were, were Tampa um in, in dallas and he ended up having um a huge impact well this has been awesome uh, i really appreciate you, you coming on i love having guests just because i feel like i'm talking to myself and i have questions and i answer them myself but i, I love to hear from other people and then the conversation continues to roll so this this has been awesome man i, I appreciate it and then uh yeah we'll have to catch up uh, again here um in the near future of course and uh if if, if you want to direct anybody towards me for my Patrick Kane yes, remarks, you can do. go yes. right ahead because, <laughs> because you don't deserve any of that slack there. You can come after me, come after me. I, I know that seems crazy. It just seems like a good fit. And go and ahead and plug your fit. shows for him. Uh, plug your shows and where people can find you guys. All right. We're anywhere on social media, basically Starcastic R. That's where you can find us uh, anywhere on uh, any, so any podcast platform. It's just Starcastic remarks. You can find us there. Uh, we, we've been a little bit on incognito lately because of me <laughs> moving. We mentioned at the, at the beginning yes. of this episode, go full circle, but uh, we've got, uh, we got lots more content coming up. We've actually got your eye uh, coming on awesome, here in yeah. a little bit. So, and that your, your, your episode kind of spawned all the ideas for me to, to get him on. So thank Good, you. Yeah, he's great. And, yeah. and then, uh, and then we're going to have David Castillo on as well uh, to kind of talk about the, uh, the draft and who awesome. the stars can possibly get. So, uh, that's within the next couple of days. So it's like no content for like 12 days. And then it's <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> three, three episodes in the next three days. So we're really excited to get that started. So well, awesome. Joey, well, be, yeah. Yeah. Joey, thanks man for having me on. I really appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, nothing better to nothing better to just talk some stars hockey this uh, this off season. Yeah. Be sure to check them out. Those, those episodes where you're and David will be, uh, will be awesome. You will not want to uh, miss those episodes for sure. Alrighty, Stars fans, that will do it. Um, some extra long content for you today. I think we gave the people what they wanted. So enjoy your Thursday and uh, enjoy the weekend. We got free agency right around the corner. So everything's starting to heat up this NHL offseason. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you tomorrow. So long, Stars fans.